Well, hello and welcome to another Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to see you again, and I do hope that you are doing well. Um, we'd we'll start with a little bit of a recap today to see what you think about some of these things. So, um, creation ex nihilio means to make new things. Do you agree that it does think that? I would hope that you do not, because it means creation out of nothing. Yep, that's right. A literalist believes the Bible is a very important book that shouldn't be taken too seriously. Do they really think that? Well, yes, they do. Uh, there is no conceivable circumstances in which a Catholic church will allow a termination of a pregnancy. Is that true? Well, no, it's not, because you've got the principle of double effect that we looked at. Then we've got Peter Singer's idea of speciesism is silly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Peter Singer uh, and speciesism, you need to go back and re-watch that. Um, however, whether you think it's silly or not is your opinion. Uh, but he has does make a lot of sense in a lot of ways. And if the Genesis creation narrative is not literally true, then there is really no point reading it. Again, an opinion, but what do you think about that? And while you think about that, go and grab a pen and paper because here's our cheesy intro music. Okay, so welcome back. So our title today is The Tree of Life Asp. As you've been aware that we've been looking at a painting, we looked at creation of Adam last time. We've been talking about the uh, role of God, so the role of humanity. And today we're going to be looking about another piece that the Educasa Gambor do require that you are familiar with. So we're going to explore the asp no mosaic at the San Clemente and see what that shows about Christian belief. So please make sure you've got the title written down. It's going to be good if you can describe uh, three parts of the Tree of Life Asp mosaic. It's going to be great if you can explain what these parts teach us about belief in God, because actually that's what we're thinking about. And it's going to be even better if you can link these uh, with visual clues with biblical truths as well. During today's session, we're going to look at a table. You're going to do an in-depth review, and then there's an exam question for you to think about. So to start off with, here's a little question for you to muse yourselves with. I want you to imagine that you are an accomplished artist. Okay, For me, I have a specialism of stickman drawing or stick women drawing. I'm not sexist. Um, a senior bishop of the church has asked you to produce a piece of artwork that shows what Christians believe about Jesus or God. The bishop tells you that you've got free reign in terms of how you do it, but you've got to include at least three of the following beliefs, which are listed there behind me. So, I'd like you to pause this clip now and just do a little bit of a drawing that fits three of those. And maybe send that to one of your friends just so they can tell you how brilliant you are or send it through to your teacher at the end of the lesson because maybe we'd like to display it. So just spend five minutes or so drawing a picture that's got at least three of these beliefs in it and then come back to me. Excellent. So what I'd like you now to do is I would like you to access the description below and I'd like you to download this table. If you're not able to do that um, because you don't have the facilities to do that, you can write the table out in your book if you wish. But if obviously if you can download it, that's going to save you a fair bit of effort and hassle. Um, we're going to be using this table as we go throughout this lesson. So uh, as we go through the next few slides, then you're going to be adding information to it. So the idea is that you say... Uh, you, you, we go, go through it and there'll be a Bible passage which you need to identify which one it is. You're going to say what it says and you're going to say what belief it looks at 
and the reference of this in the artwork as well. Now you don't have to draw a picture of the artwork, but you can just write it down. The exam board is not going to ask you to draw this, fortunately. This is not an art exam. What the exam board may do is ask you, how does the Tree of Life ASP demonstrate belief in God or what it shows about Jesus or so on. So I'm now going to go through that. I'm going to show you the Tree of Life ASP. Um, this is what it looks like. Obviously, that's quite tiny. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on this as we go through this lesson so you can really clearly see what it is that I'm talking about. But you can obviously Google it and get a, a high-res image on your screen, which will probably be better than what you can see behind me. So some facts then for you. Um, you've, you've got them there, done in the 12th century. I'm not going to read everything out to you. Um, and what you are going to do, what you've just done, shall I say, is choosing three of those things is exactly the role that um, the... Marcelino di Palenta was given, the person who did the Tree of Life Asp, he, he was given this uh, as a, his objective and he put this together based on those principles that you've just been drawing about. So there we are, there it is uh, a little bit bigger for you so you can see it in its fine detail, just have a look at that, see what of that you recognise, see what of that you might have questions about like we did with Creation of Adam. So pause me now while you do that. Okay, we're now going to zoom in at different sections. So, the first one we're going to look at is the Alpha and Omega. You can see there that I've zoomed in. It's the A and the, the weird Omega shape that's on the right of that. Um, you've got the scriptures there that you can put on your table. So, you can now complete Revelation 22, 13. So, we're back on that table there. You can now do the top one, very obviously. And uh, you can then... Uh, you can then explain what that says as well as Isaiah 44 6 is also there as well so have a go at that uh, if you need to look at those references uh, please go to biblegateway.com and type those in so you can see what those references are about as well so as we go through this you'll just have to pause me I'm just going to carry on but you need to get that table complete so the next thing then is the chiro it's in the same area and it's the P and the X that overlaps you can see that there in the blue circle that I've put and again, you've got information behind me as what that has to do with. So I'm not going to read that to you. You're perfectly able to read that. But primarily, it's the first and second letter of the name Christ. Okay, here's the next one coming up. Okay, and you can see here the cross as a sign of forgiveness. Um, again, you know, you might say, oh, Mr. Shelton, there's... No biblical references on that, so I don't know what I'm doing. Well, read over it, because I'm sure you can work out the biblical reference for Adam and Eve, because you've done that a fair bit already this term with Genesis 3. And make any notes in your book that you need to as we go. Okay, there we are. There's a, another bit of information with regards to that previous slide. And you can see there, just over my shoulder, um, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Also on there, you've got the vine. So again, you've got the reference there that you can refer to. And there you've got the idea of Mary and John at the side of the cross, um, which is a story I'm sure you're familiar with at the crucifixion. Next then, uh, we've got the apostles represented as the 12 sheep. Um, it explains why that there. So again, you've got your references, so you can be completing your table with that. On the next one then, are uh, more ways of uh, doing the apostles. So you've got the idea of uh, the, the doves, the birds, um, surrounding Jesus on the cross on the next one then you've got a little bit more detail with regards to the tree of life and the paradise that comes from that so again have a read over that don't get hung up about the Latin um, but just be familiar with, with maybe a little bit about what that said maybe make a few notes in your book as you go There's some more information for you there. So again, using the information that you've got in the description, the, 
the load the, the image that you may have downloaded you can be labeling this and completing that table as well okay here we are with our either side of the apps um, you've got this idea of Bethlehem on the left Jerusalem on the right information there with again with quotes for you to be completing information Okay, we're approaching the end. We've got th four more slides to go. So this is our fourth. So um, what does this show about uh, Jesus? Again, your references are there. Okay, you've got this one as well, which are uh, two of the gospel writers, Mark and Luke. I'm just going to get out of the way so you can pause that. Okay, just while I'm staying off camera, there is Matthew and John. So again, be making some notes from that. And lastly, there's a summary of the symbolism that we've talked about already. Okay, so hopefully now you've got the table complete. If there's anything that you've missed, then go back and re-watch that. Uh, you do need to be familiar with the Tree of Life Asp. You don't need to know it on the detail we've necessarily just gone through because there's so much for you to remember, um, but it is a useful thing for you to be at least familiar with if the question comes up. We said during today's session it would be good if we could describe three parts of the Tree of Life mosaic. That's what we've just looked at. We said it would be great if we could explain what these beliefs teach about God and hopefully your table does that and even better if you can link those visual clues successfully to biblical truths. So um, here are five questions for you to answer in your books so pause me now where you get that done. Brilliant. And that brings us to our final thing. Our final thing is an exam question. It's a C question uh, which is an explain question. So you need two paragraphs Point evidence explanation or point point evidence explanation change, um, which would be the preferred method that I've got. Um, and the question is this, explain the rich symbolism that you'll find in the Tree of Life ASP mosaic. So the key thing is, it's about an explain question, so you're after at least two bits of detailed information with a bit of explanation of how that works and what that teaches, what the theology is behind that as well. So do that, uh, it takes you eight minutes and then come back to me, we're nearly done. Okay, so uh, as you can see there, we've clearly met our learning objectives, which is absolutely brilliant today. Um, and this is our final activity here. It's uh, to write down three things you now know about the Tree of Life ASP. Uh, one thing uh, that is a square with you that you can understand, that you could explain to other people, and uh, a question that's still going on. I'm going to leave it there. Please photograph everything. Three, please send it through to your teachers because we would love to see it. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for your time. Uh, stay safe. Wash hands. God bless you. I'll see you soon.